In God's ways, in bots we trust. In bots we trust. Welcome to another In Bots We Trust. We have sat down for this one because we're going to play some games, aren't we, Kelly? And sitting down at the table is a traditional way to play games. It is. It's actually interesting because I think we met over board games, I think. We did? Yeah. I mean, I actually saw you first as a spectator at, uh, at Google headquarters when you were oh, talking about AI. The, uh, <laughs> about AI and the dangers thereof and whatnot and the ethics of AI. Back in the days when AI was sweetening us. Just a glimmer in the programmer's eye. But now it's here with us. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but then after that, yes, we actually met and bonded over board yeah. games in the castle. And oh, really? Was it? Yes. Oh, not yeah. that this means much to anybody, but anyway. <laughs> in a pub. It's a pub. <laughs> Essentially. Now, of course, AI has been in computer games for a long time. I mean, it's probably one of the early applications yep. of artificial intelligence, really, in the traditional sense. Yeah. Uh, we all know and uh, love or hate bots uh, in, to say, shooters, at least, mm-hmm. those kind of shooting games. Uh, also, for uh, role playing games, you have then the NPCs are supposed to have their own little lives in some of them. Uh, For example, with Skyrim, uh, that's how they were originally designed is that they had like, they they could get sleepy or they could get hungry and then they would go about their daily lives all independent of, of you. All of the seven dwarves. All seven dwarves. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't... You haven't played it, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's an AI of a sort, but I always love that um, story about the infected blood in uh, World of Warcraft as well. Oh, yeah. Where something ends up kind of spreading. Uh, you know, games have had artificial intelligence at various levels of intelligence for some time, mm-hmm. and sometimes the level... Now, even before people were exposed to what we have now, the level of the artificial intelligence is in their limited viewpoints in some computer games was incredible. Yeah. Really. And some of them were becoming very nuanced. Yes. Um, you have these, obviously, these very large, like, language trees where they just talk and talk and talk, and then they get to a point where they, I have nothing to say. Okay. But still... That is usually the low end of things these days, I think. Yeah. They're a lot smarter. Um, and I think Skyrim, there was a there was a video you wanted to talk about because Skyrim is one of these games that people can mod. And right. someone, someone hooked up a lot of the other tools we've looked at to a very clever mod. Yes, so say what you want about Bethesda, but they do offer options to to have plugins and different integrations with their with their games. So yeah, Skyrim came out in 2011, if I recall, wow. and and it's still going strong. You know, uh, one of the things people have done, of course, is put it into VR, mm-hmm. uh, and so there is implementation there, and it lives on in a in a much more, we'll say, immersive way. And as an extra level of immersion that I haven't seen anywhere else yet, we had uh, this is just also coming from the community, yep. so coming from the modern community, there was a guy who integrated three existing AI tools to allow you to actually speak to NPCs. So this blew me away when I saw it. Now, it, it get, like, like a lot of these things, slightly janky for now. Again, it's just one guy yeah. uh, and he's- And it's his own mod. And it's his yeah. own mod yeah. with free tools. Yeah. So of course it's gonna be a little bit janky for now. And imagine when this actually gets, uh, and someone takes a ball and runs with it. Uh, so what it does is, uh, you yeah, you can speak to NPCs. This isn't limited to their lines. So you, when you uh, speak, it's recording and it translates that into text. That's a whisper AI. And then that text gets fed to uh, ChatGPT mm-hmm. uh, in this little pipeline. And then ChatGPT will give an output. Mm-hmm. Now the output, is in terms of the input output, as far as I understand, he's fine tuned this version of ChatGPT to just have knowledge of Skyrim, mm-hmm. the Skyrim world, all of the lore, all that kind of thing. So the characters, don't have any knowledge of what's quote unquote the real world. It's all about uh, it's um, all about just the world um, of the Nords there. Oh, okay. Skyrim. And then that gets uh, so then they have an output there um, from ChatGPT, and then it's XVA synth, I yeah. think. So every single character, their voice lines have been uh, fed into a, yeah. a text-to-speech okay, model okay. so that it's able to have their actual voice as an output for whatever speech you give it. Yeah. So then they respond in close enough to real time. They do say, let me think. 
and then they might process for a minute. Does this update the, the game state or is it just sort of its own little independent? It's its own little independent thing. So this is like yeah. the game is happening as it goes. And then if you speak to them as you would normally interact with a character, it's all text-based. So yeah. you don't say anything. They don't say anything. Uh, well, they do. They, they will have like a, a voice output, but it's just their voice lines. Yeah. So you will click the text. They will have a, a text response, usually also with a recorded voice line with it. And then that's it. They have their options. As you say, you have this little option tree and you run out of options at some point. This one, you literally speak to them mm. uh, with your own voice and then they respond with their own voice. That'd be cool. So that is, are, that is, yeah. this is what I was talking about in terms of building immersion in games. That to me was like, ooh, I see like th for RPGs, this is incredible. Yeah. Because that's often the problem I have with RPGs. When I play real RPGs. I mean, to most people, probably a computer game is a real RPG these days, bigger audience, but mm. you know, you have a human you're engaging with and sometimes that human takes your idea and is flexible and rolls with it. Sometimes they're just as blocking as a computer game engine, but you know, you have this shared experience. Um, yeah. And I think this will come up a few times in what we're about to cover in this video in that a lot of the time we play games because we want to get away from a computer, but I think we'll look at how they could enhance some of that experience, maybe. Well, it's, I think in general, playing games is about escapism of some kind. Yeah. And the more immersion yeah. you can have in a game, I think the more uh, it feels like a true escape. It's weird, though, because there's times when I play Dungeons & Dragons and I, we're just sat around a table, eating snacks, drinking some drinks, talking to people. Right. But I, I, really, I really personally get like mind's eye theater in my head. And that's one of the things I like. Not everybody does. But I really start to kind of visualize where I am and things like that. Right. And that's actually, uh, that's half the fun of it. But Some yeah. people cannot do that. No. Or no. don't want to do that. <laughs> I know. And it depends on the game. Some games yeah. lend themselves more to just stat tracking. Some lend themselves to storytelling and everything yes. in between. But this does lead to, I think we'll jump into our first screen share here. This is on Wired. I cannot seem to get rid of this. Uh, <laughs> just over here. Oh, yeah, there it is. So, uh, color-wise. White, white on beige. Mm -hmm. um, this Fast. is from just a couple of weeks ago. So, generative AI in games. Obviously, this is a mod you spoke about with Skyrim. Um, and AI Dungeon, which we'll come to very, very shortly, has been using generative AI for some time, actually. We'll come to that in a minute. But as long as when other games start doing this, this is where we'll get into some issues, is this copyright. And game companies, we spoke about... Movie studios in the last video, games companies, some of them are just as big as movie studios these days. Um, and once you start wanting to introduce content into a game, AI Dungeon is a bit different because it's very open. Whereas if you had Skyrim, for example, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be trained on its world. So copyright is less of an issue. Yeah. Someone says, I want to, I don't know, go on an adventure with Snoopy. They'll probably be like, who the hell is Snoopy? But you know, yeah. there's a bit more control than something like AI Dungeon, but uh, if they have mods, and I guess this gets into the whole, always the issue with these sorts of uh, user-generated content, like who's to blame, I suppose, is always yeah, the discussion. the provider of the tool or <laughs> the user of the tool. Yeah, yeah it's in here. We'll, we'll come to AI Dungeon in a minute. This is mostly talking about this. Yeah, and we do obviously see some examples of games that kind of bought us here, things like Minecraft and Roblox already have these problems to a certain degree because people can replicate Disney characters or whatever. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? <laughs> uh, but of course, that's a human making that decision fully. Yes. Whereas with the generative AI, it's 50-50-ish, uh, wherever we decide to put that percentage. But that's this article anyway. Have you tried AI Dungeon? In the past? I have not. Okay. No, I'm interested. Okay. Well, let's jump into it. I did actually cover it on the uh, on my YouTube channel some time ago, and I think it was initially, I don't know about now, using um, GPT-2, mm. which it's been around for a while. It's probably one of the first fairly well-known projects to have actually used any open AI stuff, to be honest with you. Interesting. You can okay. see from here, like some of the dates on some of these things. Before, but Three years ago, two years ago. Yeah. It can get weird very quickly. So I'm interested to see where it's got to. Uh, it's available in the browser and also apps as well. So you've used this. Yeah. And have you used it with others or just on your own to try it out? Just on my own. 
So you can actually kind of change different things. So you can invite other people to the scenario as mm -hmm. well. Okay, so you can do that. It is possible to have a group. Straight into it. And is it railroaded in any way, or is it totally free roguelike? It's pretty of? free. It's pretty okay. free, but you can break it quite easily. We used to be able to in the past. What mm -hmm. I'm interested to see is what it's like now. What do you feel like? Fantasy, mystery, zombies, apocalyptic, cyberpunk, custom archive. Um, I, I feel like mystery because uh, certainly apocalyptic and cyberpunk are things we're living through right now and I don't want to <laughs> think about those too much. Characters. This is a rather limited choice of characters, but I guess this is cool. how they railroad you slightly. Patient, yeah. <laughs> detective, spy or doctor? Detective. Okay. And... Right. Uh, Alaric. Why not? I don't know how spell that. But... A-L-A-R-I-C. -A yeah? A-R. It, do, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> it really matters, Kelly. If you're creating your own world... Oh, dear, that doesn't look good. Well, maybe you have to... Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, I will narrate this as tedious as it, will, as it will get. This is actually interesting. They haven't really added um, speech yet. Mm -hmm. I don't know why these are highlighted as well. We'll come to that. You are Alaric, a detective living in Chicago. It's a very Chicago name. You have a pistol and a police badge. You enter the forest. Where you, there's a famous forest in Chicago. Yes. Well, maybe that's my knowledge of well, Chicago. The, uh, the urban jungle, huh? Where you lead the criminal you're searching for fled to. Suddenly, the trees around you come alive and start to writhe and talk like living creatures, their branches snapping and whipping wildly in every direction. You can hear a deep and primal growling coming from somewhere deep within the forest. I'll, I'll tell you why I think it's underlined. That's because the first part is actually what they've written, uh, and then the next part is the underlined is the generated text. So hence, retry. retry. Yeah, almost certainly. Let's see. So maybe. Ah, uh, there we go, yeah. Okay. Actually, this seems more realistic. Suddenly yeah. you hear a twig snap under your feet, you turn around, gun ready, see a figure darting behind a nearby tree, and you give chase, hoping to catch them. As you approach the tree, you realize it's actually a decoy. Someone grabs you from behind. You struggle to get free, but the person overpowers you and pins you to the ground. Oh my. Continue, I guess, continues to text. Take a turn. You try and do something. Sure. That seems to be the default action. So let's try to take a turn. I also see a number counting down here. I don't know if this is credits, which didn't used to exist last time, but that's reasonable. Okay. So this is interesting because it starts to combine this kind of old school text adventure. Do say story. Yeah. Scene. Very cool. Okay. Um, so do and then you write you take you write in yeah. an action okay and actually so i have been uh, reading and reviewing and i interviewed the writer of a very good book called 50 years of text adventures mm -hmm. an ai dungeon is featured in there towards the end you have been eaten by a Gru. that's uh well what was that again uh, uh that uh, that one of the very first text adventure games mm, there's a lot of them try try to fight off free no fight free of the Grapple. Might Use it. Well, he has his gun now already, so he try. He might try to pistol that one. Oh, okay. I would. I don't want to shoot. I'm a detective. The assailant. Assailant. There you go. First try. And the interesting thing with AI Dungeon, which has been criticised before, is it, it doesn't really have any content filters. Uh, and it probably it probably does, but it's more extreme than mm. some of the other options, shall we say. You can be a lot more aggressive, okay. which is reasonable, I think. Okay. Alex swings his pistol back. It's become a he, which is interesting. Uh, back in an attempt to strike the assailant with the handle. But before he can make contact, the attacker twists his arm and wrenches the gun from his grip. The weapon clatters to the ground in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> in the forest, we're still in the forest. We're starting to lose a little bit of uh, reality here. A few feet away, and the attacker stands up, towering over Alaric with a malicious grin on his face. Take a turn. Although nothing has said the assailant is mad yet, so this may or be, may or may not be less effective. <laughs> oh, no, his face it, it, is, it does say his mouth. Alaric quickly lifts his leg and delivers a powerful kick to the assailant's groin, calling him to double over in pain. As the attacker staggers back, Alaric scrambles to his feet and takes advantage of the opportunity to retrieve his fallen gun. He points it at the assailant, who raises his hands in surrender. <laughs> You're under arrest. I'm interested to see what happens if you retry. Oh, okay. I like that. I mean, like, at least you, okay. uh, you can retry it. Well, let's see what happens with continue. Okay, fine. I think it will just continue the story. Yeah, it's with no input on our part. He's heading slowly, lowers himself to the ground, still clutching his injured groin as he stares up at Eleric in defeat. Sweat drips from down his face as he meekly submits to his capture, knowing that there's no escape from a skill detective. Eleric 
approaches him cautiously, ready to handcuff him and bring him to justice. All right, I reckon we throw the story a bit here. Okay. Shoot him. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry. What? Say, so, so, hey, brother, what are you doing here? The plot twist. <laughs> yeah. As long as it interprets brother in the way that you Well, intend. we'll see. We'll see. Hey, brother, what are you doing here? Why did you attack me? The man's fake contorts in confusion. He stammers out a response. I thought you were someone else. I didn't mean to attack you, I swear. Okay. Zero, I want, I want to... Who is Don't you su- supposed to be taking mum to the hospital today? We'll make it very clear. Maybe. Okay. Our mum. Our mum. Yeah. And here's we. I'm trying to break it. Uh, so All right. I don't know how to make it. Supposed to be taking mum to the hospital. Santa eyes opens wide in. Recognition is replies, I was, but I got mixed up with the wrong crowd and they promised me money if I helped them with the job. I didn't know it was going to be this serious. Ooh. Interesting. Um, what a story. I guess we had our own part. Of I mean, if nothing else, it's very rich grounds for yeah. even thinking of an idea. Imagine if you were a dungeon master and you want to think of like what would actually work. Exactly. You can try out different scenarios it's good ahead for, of time. For prototyping. Yeah. I don't know what these numbers counting down are. I guess number of turns you have. Uh, Free okay. chat with intentions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is using your uh, account for chat GPT. Oh, yeah, I logged in. No, I didn't log in. Huh. It must be connected in some way. Right. Um, okay, let's say what job? And I wonder if adding any more punctuation is. <laughs> uh, what job? Man swallows hard. It's weird because it still hasn't called him brother. Right. Hasn't. Yeah. They wanted me to distract the police while they robbed a the jewelry store. I didn't know it was going to turn into this kind of chase. Not grimly knowing that he has just uncovered a much larger criminal operation than anticipated. Okay. Let's um, say, take me. And then I reckon. To the jewelry store. Yeah, did I spell it wrong? No, well, I mean, you spelled it the correct way, actually. Okay, so we do move. We've just gone deep and deep, deeper into the forest. Okay, there it is. And I think in this case, we now should maybe describe the story ourselves. But he hasn't, for, like, what, what's interesting here is, in terms of context awareness, it hasn't forgotten that we were in a forest. Yeah. Uh, at any point, actually, really. Like, we, it didn't describe it earlier, but, like, it's still there. Oh, it, Earlier iterations of it, if I, I'm pretty sure this is going to be um, a late, like this is GPT 3.5 because yeah. earlier versions wouldn't have uh, the attention required got lost very to, easily when to remember to yeah. from even from paragraph to paragraph where you were. So that's good. We see the thieves leaving with suitcases stuff full. They get into a black car and drive away at... Oh, what the hell? Oh, just, <laughs> I just realized it just scrolled up. But uh, didn't... Well, it, looked, it seemed like it happened earlier in the day, but okay, sure. True. Nonetheless. Okay. It sort of repeated itself a little bit. Now it's continuing the story for us. Runs with his own car. I don't know how the how current car was there. It was, just, it was it, no, but this is like you know, in any of these kind yeah. of stories, the, the like it's just very convenient, but it's plausible. And of course, we can retry that. We're like, ah, that wasn't very realistic. Um, let's see if it's any better. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty pretty the same, and it's still it's refusing to acknowledge that it's his brother. And it's saying that we've handcuffed him, but we already handcuffed him. Actually, uh-huh. we handcuffed him earlier, so it does get a little. Lost. Did we? I think you just put your hand. Your, uh, anyway, uh, I think so. All right. Uh, and now we can also say, um, say, <laughs> see, we can try and break the, the game. <laughs> it, okay. 
How's my car getting on, Joseph? Wheels and someone must have taken it from the station and put it to the forest. We're not in the forest anymore. So you can see it's starting to break already. Uh, I mean, mildly. I, only when you're really trying. And, I know, I know. Uh, if you were to, it's, but like, okay, think about any computer so, game, for example, yeah. over the years. And think about how they have to enforce boundaries. And sometimes there is invisible walls stopping yeah. you from going somewhere. Sometimes it's an unkillable character. It, it, there's always something in there to uh, that if you follow the, the kind of intended path, you'll be safe enough. Once you start pushing at the boundaries, definitely <laughs> things can start to break. And oh, you see the same thing here. And uh, wait, okay, I don't know who's created this. I think nobody knows who created this, right? This is AI Dungeon. You said no, no, it, it listed his names. Yeah. It has it? Okay, okay, yeah. cool. But uh, nonetheless, it's. If in a, in a small operation like that, I think there's reasonable limitations yeah. on how yeah. how good it can be. Uh, none, now, that's not so much the case when it comes to uh, D and D, for example, uh, where you know you have player characters in there who are always you know trying to break the game, and you as a dungeon master have to scramble to figure out <laughs> <what you> mean. <laughs> how how do I save this how like please just do the I put so much work into this one uh, storyline and you've gone off and now you've murdered a shopkeeper and I don't know how to, how to keep That's this thing on so like yeah. Uh, yeah I'm not sure what my point was with that but definitely uh, you, you do mention what about the company and they, yeah. they have now this is a relatively new because I've been keeping an eye on them they have mm -hmm. now sort of scoped out into your yeah, latitude voyage is now kind of a company and they have a bunch of tools here which you sort of subscribe to for so some of these seem very interesting but you have to become a subscriber uh, and it actually is relatively expensive i'm very interested to try some of these actually i think it's reasonably expensive i don't know if there's a trial let's have a quick look We've been asked about a tenor or something. Was you know, on the subject of artificial intelligence, I've been asked to use Cloudflare so many times today. <laughs> mm. uh, Ten, yeah. Yeah, so there is no free version, but it might be worth trying at some point in the future to see how well they work. But uh, especially some of these kind, you're talking about using them to create your own worlds. And if you could take something like this into something like Twine, which is a an interactive fiction tool, it gets, it gets interesting. Yeah. Because a company I've been meaning to contact anybody to see if, you know, they want some people to work with them because it's kind of an interesting combination of a lot of things that I find interesting. Lots of uses of the word interesting there, but um, yeah. Do, do you know anyone who is using this right now to, generate, to create scenarios? Not that I know of. Okay, no um, one's saying it, but maybe. I think this will come in a little bit in some of the conversations we have throughout here. You know, as we said earlier, a lot of people who who play these sorts of games like the escapism, and often they like creating the worlds themselves. Yes, these are not people who do this as a job. They actually like to take a break from their job to write these fantasy worlds. They may use them to generate ideas, but not fully. And the interesting thing is, there's always been a an AI in a very very loose sense of the word behind a lot of these, where people will have like random item tables and all this kind of. Of course, thing. yeah, it's not a very clever AI. But if you run out of an idea, you can buy these books of tables. And it's like, oh, yeah. the shopkeeper is roll a dice short, you know, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. So, I mean, rolling a dice has been a way. It's not, I, mean, well, I don't know if I followed artificial intelligence, but it's certainly uh, within a limited scope generating some randomness yeah. Yeah. to the... I think this is a nice segue, actually. Uh, there is this article we found on DevPost here that sort of talks through someone doing something similar. Uh, so, homebrewery is a very well known tool that people use a lot to publish their own kind of D&D looking source books. A lot of these are going to be D&D, I think just because it's the most source material. I, I find it interesting to know how they train them yeah. because um, some of the material is open and this is a whole controversy with Wizards of the Coast in the past year or so, but we won't talk about that here. Okay. Uh, with their, but the, 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 the material that is open and usable by anybody is not much. Uh, there is things like DMs Guild and stuff, but you'd have to physically purchase them, even if it's free, download them. They're PDFs. They're varying levels of PDF. Mm -hmm. They may or may not be text. Like how you train these models, I'm not so sure, which is interesting. Uh, although it talks a little bit about here, I think the problem here, this this project itself, and you can see from the fact it's GPT-2, yes. I find this interesting that with lots of these, they're all relatively old. 
But it's also interesting to show that they were some of the first people to try. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nerds to uh, yeah. and where there's a will, there's a way with this kind of stuff yeah. for sure. Well, it's, this this <laughs> this one is actually a pro a product. I actually just paid uh, four dollars to to try it at Pinterest, and you can see there's always been these kind of world generating websites. Mm -hmm. um, Dom uh, Dom I feel like Dom Jolly, but that's the guy from a TV show. There's a famous one like Dom's World Builder or something that is lots of these. And they're just random tables, as we said. But this is actually using uh, GPT-3 in this case. So mm -hmm. what do you feel like trying? Would you like to create a character, a world, a dungeon? Uh, we can, we, I think a quest. Well, I want to see about an interesting quest over there. Okay. Yeah. So this is it's a very large font. But anyway, random. So this is a challenge rating. Dangerous. Dangerous. Style random. So this Terry Pratchett for sure. Oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. <laughs> Terry Pratchett. Okay. Uh because dangerous and Terry Pratchett is still not so dangerous. Yeah. I mean we're not gonna go George R. Martin on this thing. So I think this means it will go to the public okay. library versus your own private library, which costs more because other people can't use it, which is yeah. which is fine. Probably, okay. Uh, I guess we can select some of these. Double across. So I was like, we're just thinking of the detective and stuff again. Surprise so. reveal. Yeah. Ambush. I mean, that's what we just had. Okay. So, yeah. All right. It costs a few credits. And then, I mean, this is great for just generating one shots, potentially. I don't know how much material we'll give you. you but again, a lot of these things are more like a genesis for ideas rather than a complete idea in themselves. Yeah, and um, that goes for for a lot of these tools that we just saw. I mean, yeah. it's uh, including well any of the other AI tools we've covered before. It's it's more about like the hardest part sometimes is starting. Yeah, and even if like the whole thing, um, it's it's more yeah, it's more of a framework or like I said, this genesis rather than like perfectly uh, intact and amazing story that you can pick up and run with. I, I guess it won't be. Yeah. We'll find out. But Let's see what we have. We have yeah. Zolotl's Doom. Quest given by Count Zolotl. Mm -hmm. Count Zolotl is in a bit of a pickle. This is Terry Pratchett. Yeah. He's being threatened by an unknown force that is quickly marching towards his castle. The party must help him find a way to stop the force before they reach the castle and they siege to it. As they investigate further, the party will discover that Count Zolotl's own brother, <laughs> to be listening, is the one that in the force. The brother was once a trusted advisor, but is slowly being corrupted. Figure out a way. Uh, uh, we're forced to battle some nasty creatures, be ambushed if they're successful, and then some notes. Yeah. Okay. Jesus is an ancient monster, cult of necromancy. Oh, there's all sorts I of I don't know where the ocean came in. There's no mention of an ocean anywhere, though, which is well, interesting. I we don't know where it is. <laughs> uh, cult of necromancers. I mean, I think we have to use all of these because some of these are very. Yeah. And you notice, though, and this is where it gets interesting and where I think I've got around the copyright. Okay. There is, if you were to go even to DMs Guild or Wizards of the Coast official quests, mm -hmm. you would have links to the actual creatures and things like that. Yes. This is not giving you any of that. That's how it gets around the copyright. Things like dragons and necromancers. Okay. None of that is trademarked by Wizards of the Coast. Understood. So you get around that problem, I guess. Uh, and I suppose what we could do. Like, and so what do we? And then this is th that's it. Is it? This is all you get. That's it. Yeah. Okay. It's small, but it's enough for a one shot. Well, mm -hmm. then what we would need, and I don't know if it lets you kind of build the world. I'm not sure. Is now we kind of need some NPCs. Yeah. So, It'd be cool if it was like okay, it saves this, and then if you go to NPCs, it will yeah. it'll exactly. intel it like it'll know in context what to do here and where to put them. See, so we want NPC common. We're not really a common uh, uh, count lottle. It's not really common. We're not adventurers either. Um, let's just let's just try to have interest. So style. So again, we have style. I mean, I suppose we should keep it. Although these are different. Oh, there is check actually. Gender is we know male count. I think he said he. We don't know what. Let's go random. Well, we know what they are. They're a count, but it doesn't. Seem to be. Well, he'd be. Mm, diplomat is not quite as. Uh, I'd say it's nobility of some kind. Is there nobility in there? No. King. Let's just go for king. Okay. Random alignment. It's probably like. Uh, chaotic. Lawful good or chaotic good. Chaotic good. Well, it's a count, you know. A little bit absent minded because, yeah. 
grandiose. I'm like, yeah, not true. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, but what I mean is interesting is because we actually wanted to create a very particular character based on the story, but we couldn't. But, uh, yeah, it's Pippin. Oh, now we actually have characteristics as well. He's a male brownie king. I will say, I don't know if it's using the standard rules for creation. Because these numbers seem a little high to me. Strength but... 11 and uh, dexterity. Uh, constitution 16. I know about brownies. They, they seem to, well, stomachs of... Uh... But this is the funny thing. This it isn't using any of the mechanics of the system. It's all just story. Because again, it gets around the copyright issue. Okay, but also it's nothing to do with what we just had. So no, like, this no. is just some other rant. This is completely from scratch. Yeah, generated. exactly. That's very unfortunate, actually. So I mean, but that's the thing. As we'll we'll probably revisit lots of times here, the world of role playing and board games and things. This is pretty. It's pretty in comparison to computer games. It's a pretty small industry. Even a game like Dungeons and Dragons, which is done very well. In the comparison to a computer game, it's probably a middling success. Yeah, even <laughs> at, the, at the height of its yeah. of its power and success, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. But it, I mean, it has a very what I'll say is it has a very passionate, you know, um, user base. Mm. Um, and but it's it is smaller. Yeah, I I wonder why. Is it because of setup and because of cost? It's History, be cost. culture, I don't know. Yeah. Effort, I think. It's another right. question. I know that's not a related it's question. Chat GPT. Yeah. We're about to actually have a chat with chat GPT. Okay. Because um, this is actually something that attracted me a while ago. This is a, a post uh, from March um, using chat GPT 4 as a DM. It's kind of going to be a little bit similar to AI Dungeon, but let's just kind of go straight to the source. Um so they had a dice roller themselves, I guess. They have a, quite a cool dice app here which we can bring out. Uh, always the fun to see what screen it's going to come up on. You can tell I've been using this recently. Let's make that a little bit smaller. That is fancy. Yeah. It's I, more real than my, my real dice. I paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, does that make it better? It is actually quite good. The programmer is a very well-known programmer in the Mac kind of world. Mm. Okay. Um, I remember I did a uh, my, one of my first electronics projects was an LED yeah. uh, based one that you click a button and it would do a random yeah. roll of a six sided dice. <laughs> so I would like to use this and maybe tweak it a little bit. It's interesting because it's given quite specific prompts here. We can probably feed in the character we just got generated from the other service, but let's start with with this and change it a little bit. So here's Chad, as I like to call him. <laughs> if you're choosing a four, let's just say there's two players. Two players in the room with you. You will be our DM. Tell us what to do, including when die rolls are needed. Ask questions as needed, for example, exactly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, that's it. Okay. All right, so I reckon we just take it from the other. Just lift it from. Well, there's only one of them, but it'll do. <laughs> can probably give it the whole thing, can you? Just give it the whole, the whole okay. text, the whole, including the background. Oh, I mean, we don't want the background, do we? Oh, why not? Okay, sure. Well, not that much, and we'll create another one. Okay. So where are you, Chad? You have to tell us player one. Okay, so let's just do change a few little things. Okay. And are they also everything above as as before? Let's go for a slightly different style. Already have code, already oh, okay. Not uh, uh, let's say city guard, city guard, uh, under cheese maker, <laughs> and above cook. <laughs> Not can't do maker. Uh, chaotic. Uh, would you want them to be kind of good? I think. Um, well, lawful good. I don't okay, know, I don't know. If that's the, fine. That's fine. If Chat GPT is gonna just so I yeah. See what we get. Do we need to give them the? Do we need to give it the strength, like all of the all of the? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. I can't actually remember if it does. Um, 
Name, race, class, and a brief background. You saw it didn't ask for the stats. I mean, I don't know if it really knows the rules of D&D. So, we'll see. I... No, probably not exactly, no. Okay. The city of Crowthorn nestles over in Pippin's land. Nestled between lush forests and rolling hills, thrives under King Wu, his grandiose and just rule. However, an ominous presence looms on the outskirts of the kingdom. Rumours speak of strange occurrences in nearby forests, and the city guard led by Sinu is on high alert. Now, this would be a super useful case to hook together all those services into yeah. speaking, and then we can speak back. Yes, yes. That's actually something that would be super fun to do. No one has. I'm, I'm sure someone has, but if not, I've given myself another side project. <laughs> uh, one evening, as the sun sets over the horizon, both of you find yourselves in the bustling city centre. Your own with fresh pastries. Fills the air as merchants prepare for the night life. But amidst the cheerful ambience, a cloaked figure approaches you both. The figure with a mysterious aura steps forward and says, Greetings, Your Majesty, King Pippin, and you, the vigilant guardian, Senu, come with it anyway. There's a lot of text here. I don't think we need to read it all out. You can probably read it on screen yourself. But we're being offered where um, something is threatening the kingdom. It's a classic D&D. They've given us a map to the heart of the forest. Do we accept the quest? Or what do you think? Well, I think we should accept the quest for the purposes of this argument. <laughs> okay. So let's do this. So Sinu... I'm going to go, I'm going to probably take a contingent of guards out with me to investigate because who knows who this guy is or what his deal is. To take some guards not to investigate. I think Sinu is the kind of the kind of uh, captain of the guards who would want to see this himself. I don't know. That's the impression, I guess. So Senna is going to go out. Pippin is not so bold. I would rather spend time in town finding out who this person is. With his network of spies, right? Because he's King Pippin. Ah. Because I assume any good king has, good or otherwise, has a network of spies. Okay. Excellent Sinu. You decide to get a group of guards, etc. etc. Assemble your squad. Pippin, you set to utilize your network of spies. Roll a d20 and let me know the result. Okay. I wonder what I would say if if you said I rolled a 21. Just <laughs> we'll try and break it in a minute. Yeah, oh, sorry. I am so obsessed with no, me too. Yeah. That, that's part of the fun of games, right? It's trying to break them. I know I criticized you for it earlier, but I like to do it too. Yeah, because fire is very efficient. They swiftly gather pressure and collect figure. You learn that this mysterious official is now the watcher and the watcher and the Okay, you have to roll a d20. I'll let you just uh, click the button. So okay, I'll do it. So it's all on me. Probably roll a two. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I did roll a two, but with a zero as well. <laughs> okay. Um, a natural 20. Wow. I mean, we basically solved it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, to be fair, in, in many respects, I think this is better than AI Dungeon, which is the funny thing. <laughs> That's the sad part. Yeah, the implementation of AI Dungeon didn't seem to... I mean, like, it's, 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 it's fine. It's yeah. good. Uh, but, yeah. this. Although, we haven't tried to break it yet. So, no. let's see. Uh, let's think of a situation. Um, I right. take my spaceship and... Sinu, Sinu decides to kill all the guys. <laughs> and take a rocket to the moon. <laughs> I mean, okay, if you were a DM and someone said that to you, what, like, what would your approach be? Ruben Zaitse wants to turn into a cat and live a life of luxury by the sea. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Bravo! <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, that was fair enough. Sorry, sorry, ChatGPT. So this is actually what I would probably do as a DM. So <laughs> like, this is nonsense. Stop. All right, I think that's that's. I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. good. Okay, let's leave yeah. it there for now. Honestly, this is such rich grounds for inspiration. Yeah. Like, wow, I'm. I've learned something new today. Yes. Yeah. 
I it's pretty good. Never thought of using it in this way. No, it's, I didn't realize it would be quite so good. I must admit. That's I'm often like, hey, look at my code. Tell me what I did wrong, and then it's usually hallucinate something stupid. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm always a bit like, well, oh. it basically gets to hallucinate completely. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And honestly, it can hallucinate whatever it wants, and it's fine. That's like I think in the more creative aspects, uh, even though it's maybe limited in its creative scope, it's still. Um, more free, uh, like or at least if there it makes any errors or hallucinations, they're less obvious. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And here it was very quick to put us. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty put good. Us to, uh, I like that. Oh, it's actually three point five. It's GPT three point five actually. Basically. Yeah, that's the default. Now, for, honestly, what I've seen of uh, four is that it is underperforming yeah. in many regards at the moment. Yeah. I think uh, that's a side conversation. I thought we might try one thing um, before we go to some of the other board game ideas. I, I saw this. So I taught ChatGPT to teach me board games, and now I won't ever go back. I'm sure we could probably use also use ChatGPT to generate ideas for board games because it would know some of the common ones. Mm -hmm. But there's always been this challenge, and this is something we know all too well when we play games, is trying to interpret rules. And you end up going to board game geek and things like that. It's one of my favorite arguments it to really have. Is, is I'm really extremely pedantic, yeah. and I like to argue about the interpretation of the rules. Whereas if we have an independent arbitrator who will tell us this is the rule, then maybe that would take out but an extra hour of arguing. I guess, of course, the problem is in this case, do you trust ChatGPT? I know. I don't know if this is more. If, is this trust or is this like let's just get it done? Because I think yeah. if you're at the stage where you want to condense the rules using uh, some kind of uh, chatbot, then, well, you, you've already given away a certain amount of trust. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's what so I would... This writer is talking about how it hallucinates quite a lot. Yeah. And you're playing uh, War of the Rings, which is quite a complicated game, which is interesting. It's fun. Um, it's fun, fun, fun. The interesting thing is, is he said he's trained it, but I don't exactly know how. Well, this is this is where fine tuning comes into play. So I'll let you scroll away there. But essentially, when you have one of these models and you want to you want it to be on a specific corpus of text, or you want it to give you results from a specific world, or in this case, a rule book, uh, you can fine tune it based on just what it's able to see in that rule book. And then it will give you responses that are pertaining only to that content. All of the training that it has about language uh, and in general, it still retains, but then its output is only okay. going to be related to this. Because I've come, um, I've actually uh, tried some offline tools that let you upload documents mm -hmm. and just use those documents as a source of knowledge, which would be interesting to, to try. Yes. You have to go back through them. But let's just, if we just try and... Uh, here. So, um, okay. How do you set up a game of? Now, this is still twenty twenty one, isn't it? I think twenty twenty one. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So anything twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three doesn't that's know. It's a game that I know fairly well. That okay. You know what people don't know the rules of is Monopoly. People mess up those that's rules. Too, Monopoly is too easy though. You need something a bit more obscure. Uh, outer Rim, we've played Outer, outer rim. rim. Yeah, even though that's also not, that's not super complicated. No, but uh, like I was gonna say Mansions of Madness, but Mansions of Madness is all reliant on an app. So actually the setup is not that complicated. Mm, that's true. Let's see. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, we should actually probably find the Outer Rim rules. <laughs> <laughs> We kind of want to do what he did in that article and try and break it a okay. little bit. Um, I'm trying to remember. If, we played this not so long ago, and I'm trying to remember if there were things where we got confused. Like, um, attacking each other, there was, I, I dimly recall, I was uh, very much in favor of, uh, you, you, you betrayed everybody. That's what I remember. So this is the setup. It seems reasonable, but let's actually find the rules. Let's have a quick scan through this. Now, Fantasy Flight does this annoying thing. Oh, there's actually two versions as well. They have, oh, I see. They always have learn to play, and then they have rules reference, which is always confusing. But let's go for the learn to play. Yes, it's, uh, 
Looks familiar. <laughs> Thankfully. Uh, set up. Okay. Build the map. So you have to set up the board in a very particular way. Um, Game board. That's step one. That's yeah, fine. Components. Actually, oh, that's components. Set up. Choose characters. Choose ships. Place ships and characters. Uh, but it actually... I give it the benefit of the doubt on setting yeah, up because the board. Yeah, because it's an image as well. Because it actually says, check the rule book. Um, I wouldn't say it's because it's actually changed. It's not really changed. Um, yeah. I'm wondering if this stuff is true. I think it is. Starting credits. I don't think you mentioned that either. Set up patrol tokens. No, I don't think it did. Nothing about action deck, uh, credit tokens, damage tokens. Nothing that's about patrol tokens. No. So it has skipped a couple of things. But let's, so we were talking a minute ago. Um, we had a rules question, didn't we, from last time? Can you remember what it was? Um, it was about uh, attacking or something. That's my recollection, is that we wanted to know about, was it whether damage That's happened? It. Players cannot attack each other unless a card specifically allows a player to fight combat against another player. So let's ask that. That seems like a good thing to ask. Can players attack each other? Yes, players can attack each other as scouts. As scouts of adventure, players have the freedom to interact with one another in various ways and combat among these possibilities. Uh, okay, so it words it in a very different way. Allowing players to get yeah, it's kind of saying if they can, occupy the same space on the game board, they can attack each other. Uh, that I th I don't think that's true. Yeah, in fact, that says pretty explicitly that's not true. But I think actually it is true. It's just worded in a different way. This kind of has gone from the ex the the rule, and then it will cover the exceptions. Whereas this covers the exceptions, mm. and then the rule. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of interesting. There's one there where it says they must engage in combat, and that is, that's where like you have to fight. And that's true. Let's try something that's completely irrelevant. Can players? Um, it's like a completely different game. Can players uh, checkmate the queen? It's it's. Uh, I don't think it's. Yes. So <laughs> I mean, chess is pretty well known. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But so it's not. Terrible, but I think the problem with uh, with board game rules is you don't know whether you can trust it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's close enough. I think that if you really, like I said, if it's a super complicated game and you just you, yeah, you just want to get going and you don't want to read an entire massive rule book, maybe it's good enough to summarize it here. Yeah, but it has some gaps. Yeah, I I just because of hallucination, you can never trust this. Yeah, generally. Yeah. Yeah, that's why when it's when it comes to creating ideas, it's fine. When it comes to rules and like very strict things, goes for programming, goes for board game rules. Uh, like, well, then that's as a kind of a wrap up. Um, yeah. And I don't know if there's any like official wrappers around this kind of thing, but they're probably going to use OpenAI or ChatGPT anyway. So let's see. I would like to create a. Board game. So let's try. I would like to create a board game. Help me generate some mechanics. Okay. Yes. Actually, I know what mechanic I'd like, but um... it's nice that it gives you some suggestions. Yeah. I'm actually going to pick one that's not there. Which is interesting, but it is a standard. Cool. Okay. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> you can still tell you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is still to tell me theory. I actually want to have an idea. So I would like to create a deck building game where players are. Competing podcast makers, and um, we need to build decks to achieve this goal. 
what would a plan structure look like? Sort of still going in abstract in some respects. Oh, no, 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 actually. Oh, no, 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 no. no. We've actually good. gone into yeah, action and we have different actions you can do. Marketing interaction. Yeah. Acquisition, marketing, content production, cleanup, entertainment, win the game, uh, oh, special cards representing guests or co hosts, ongoing effects, et cetera, et cetera. Remember to play this, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. How many cards do you think? I should make for a for that game. And I've actually gone through this process. Okay. I'm interested to see what answer it gives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's disseminating a little bit. Actually, no, no, no. Starting deck of about 10 to 12. That's pretty accurate. It's usually 10. Depending on the depth of the game, you might want 150, 250 cards. Actually, that is pretty good. When we looked at Dominion and a few other games, it was around 150. Yes. Um, I will say in the game that I've been making, which is also a deck builder, but a very different um, theme, we ended up finding that, uh, and yeah, you, I'll just jump because you're pointing out here, it also says that you should actually have up to 200 to 350. It says unique cards, 150 mm -hmm. unique cards, but then in the entire pool, 200 to 350. So yeah. uh, this... Yeah, but the interesting thing we found with the game that we are making, which is a has some different mechanics, is we made 150 and we never even got through half of them. I mean, obviously there's replayability and stuff like that, but I mm. think we have more than enough. Mm. And I think Dominion has around 150. There's obviously expansions to Dominion. Yes, but um, so some of the numbering is, I think, again, it's an, an idea generation. And then, of course, it does keep saying playtest, playtest. Play test. So I and mean, you'd be like, oh. That's too many games. That's too many cards. It makes you interested to see Tabletop Simulator. Tabletopia, yeah. I'm not entirely sure about that. Google really. Slides. <laughs> I mean, most of the, yeah. 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 It's not terrible. If you know nothing about the topic, yeah. and you're like, oh, I want to make a game. Yeah. There's worse things you can do than go here. Yeah. I, I, I guess we didn't necessarily intend to just do another showcase of of ChatGPT today, but like at least we can see that the, here we can... The interesting thing though is yeah. I think in all of these cases they were all using it under the hood anyway. So Yeah. Yeah. Just, um, it's so prevalent. <laughs> can't get away from it. And But it's, it's interesting because that uh, an AI device, preferably one that you could speak to that could answer board game questions, would be very genuine. <laughs> would be very useful. But would it be genuine, I think, is what I meant to say. Um, could you trust it? No. I think that's where we would come from. How could you build one that you could trust? That's the problem. That's very easy uh, in some ways. Uh, very easy as a concept, very hard in implementation, is that you would have to summarize it uh, using a different kind of model, yeah. and it would just be per game. Like So you would have to yeah. actually take the game, take the text of that game, put it through natural language processing for summarization, and then you can have some outputs yeah. from that. And But like that's a laborious, you can make a pipeline for it, but it's just where you don't have a uh, something like this that you're relying on stuff that it's scraped, uh, you know, information that it has, and then its interpretation of it in the context of yeah. so many other stuff. You'd have to probably build a specific It, it brings us full circle to the copyright stuff. What does Fancy Flight think about the fact that it can recount the rules of Outer Rim? What if we wanted to create our own bot trained on Outer Rim and then release it commercially? Like, where does all the copyright come in? This is where it gets complicated again. But the rules, the rules are not copyright, right? I mean, that, like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, the game yeah. is the rules are components of the game. Uh, I think summarizing the rules is hardly grounds. Okay. For for copyright, I guess we'll see, won't we? I guess we will. I'm not a lawyer, <laughs> so if you do it, don't blame me. If uh, if you know Wizards of the Coast or whoever comes knocking, um, but like, how can summarizing something? Uh, you know, there's, there's no commercial bent there. There's no. Well, like, I think that's no, the thing. If you sell it as a service, if for, you sell it, okay. there's already services that do this, and I wonder how they fix it. Like Dyes uh, makes videos and, and there's a whole YouTube community of people making uh, how to play videos and things like that. So I wonder 
how they do it. But I mean, yeah. in a sense, is that not benefiting the creator oh, sure. as well? So for sure, for the most part, it's in their best interest yeah. if, it, if there's someone who has a large le- um, thing, because then you have to own the game as well. Yeah. So that's you're not interfering with their um, IP. Yeah. You're in any t- if anything, you're making it more accessible to other people. So yeah. I don't. It's not in their best interest. Even if it was potentially uh, possible to sue them, like why would you? Yeah. All right. It's interesting. We started this video when it was bright and sunny, and we was have it? progressed through an adventure, and it's now dark and ominous, like <sighs> a fantasy villain is coming to destroy us all from afar. I mean, he's my brother. <laughs> I did my long lost brother. I never even knew I had. It sounds like an idea from AI Dungeon, doesn't it? It does, it does, it does. Hmm. Okay, Sinu. Uh, Pippin. <laughs> it's been good. We have been Sinu and Pippin. We have, yeah. That makes you a king. I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm an evil king. You're a loyal guard, so. Yeah, yeah. True. Who's best, really? Who's going to live longer, eh? Depends what world we're living in. I guess we'll find out. We're, we can ask ChatGPT. Nice, please. Please. Nice, please. Trust, trust, trust. Invites, please. Trust, trust, trust.